Good morning. Welcome to worship on a beautiful spring morning. There are people in the fields between here and Hosmer. So it, it is spring, it appears. Um, in Hosmer this morning we had confirmation and then we also had a church council meeting. So consequently, <laughs> I may have been a minute or two late. Sorry about that. This morning, the announcements we have, first of all, the new keyboard is here. It is totally paid for. Liz has been playing it for you this morning. We want to give a special thanks to the Luther League for their donation and for their challenge and for all of those who donated uh, at the Easter breakfast to meet that challenge and then also to the Christian Crusaders and then to those who made anonymous donations for the balance so that it is totally paid for. We will be doing the dedication of the new keyboard next Sunday during worship. Quilters will be working Monday and Tuesday again from one to four. This week, confirmation classes will be here in Bowdle. And a congratulations to Cindy Lowens. Last, yesterday, we had our Northern Plains Conference Women of the ELCA meeting down at Redfield, and Cindy is now the new vice president for the conference, and um, we, at St. Paul will be hosting the spring meeting of the women of the ELCA of the Northern Plains Conference next year. So we have that to look forward to. Are there any other announcements that anyone has this morning? Again, welcome to all. Let us begin our worship. I would ask that you stand as you are able as we confess our sins and ask for forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin receive your forgiveness and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and synod authorized minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. It's on page 634.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us join together in the prayer of the day. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading on the third Sunday of Easter is found in the book of Acts, chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. Peter, he addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and the righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witness. 
and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. We will read responsively Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Offer the appointed sacrifice and put your trust in the Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine abound. Our second reading is found in the first book of John, chapter 3, verse 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that he did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be, he has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sin, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteousness, just as he is righteousness. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Our reading this morning comes from Luke chapter 24, verses 36b through 48. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and ter terrified, and they thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are a witness of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Kids, you want to come on up this morning?
It was pretty nice yesterday, wasn't it? It's going to be nice today, too. The story that we read in this Spark Story Bible, they call it the Great Commission. Okay? Let's see. Where can we find a spot here for you to see? What's it right here? Or you want to sit down there? Okay. Okay. I'll try to show the story so you can see the pictures, okay? Jesus went to see the disciples after he had been raised from the dead. They buzzed with excitement. Is that you, Jesus? We're so glad to see you. Do you want something to eat? Jesus smiled. Peace be with you, he said. I have things to tell you. The disciples gathered around close to Jesus, eager to listen to him. Jesus began. God has given me all the power in heaven and earth. The disciples looked at each other and began to chatter again. Whoa, yeah. wonderful. We knew it. Fantastic. What will we do? What will you do first? Wait, Jesus said, there's more. The disciples listened carefully. Jesus told them, go everywhere in the world and teach people about me. And remember, I will always be with you. Jesus returned to heaven. The happy disciples soon began the work that Jesus had told them to do. So what would you have done if you were in that room when Jesus appeared? If all of a sudden you could see Jesus standing right here, what would you do? Would you be surprised? Would you be kind of scared? And all of a sudden to see somebody there when they weren't there and then they were there? But you know what? He is with us all the time. Even when we don't see him, he is with us. He's guiding us and he's loving us. He kind of, yep, yeah, but he's always with us. So let's pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your son Jesus. We thank you that he is with us today and always. Help us to remember to share his word with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up, guys. It's good to see all of you. Grace and peace to each of you from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus' appearance takes place in Jerusalem where the two men who had encountered the first, the risen Christ on the road to Emmaus find the 11 gathered together. Luke has told us that the encounter with the two men on the Emmaus road took place that very day, meaning the day of Christ's resurrection. Luke then tells us that these two, after recognizing Jesus as he broke bread with them, they rose up that very hour returning to Jerusalem where they met the 11 gathered together and those who were with them. This encounter then takes place on Easter evening. The place is the upper room where the disciples gathered behind the locked doors as related in the Gospel of John, which we read last Sunday. But unlike John's Gospel, the 11 gathered, and those 11 included Thomas. This is Jesus' third resurrection appearance in the Gospel of Luke. The women find the empty tomb but do not see Jesus. Jesus' first resurrection appearance is to Peter, but Luke only mentions that encounter, giving no detail. Jesus' second resurrection appearance is to the disciples, two disciples on the road to Emmaus, an incident that Luke records in considerable detail. The Emmaus Road appearance, which immediately precedes this morning's gospel, lays the foundation for Jesus' appearance to his gathered disciples as we read in this morning's gospel, which began with the second half of verse 36. In the first half of verse 36, 
we would have read, as they said these things, who were they? They included the two disciples from the Emmaus Road encounter, the 11, and the companions of the 11. The topic of discussion just prior to his appearance was his earlier appearance on the Emmaus Road. The apostles were ready to listen to this report because Peter had also reported seeing the risen Christ. Our gospel lesson began. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be to you. It's clear that Jesus' visit is a great surprise to the disciples. We read they were terrified and filled with fear and supposed that they had seen a spirit or a ghost. Given the presence and the testimony of the Emmaus Road disciples, we would think that the gathered disciples would be well prepared to see Jesus in their midst, but rather than gladdening them, Jesus' said in appearance startles and terrifies them. Again, they assume they're seeing a spirit or a ghost. Jesus asks, why are you troubled? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet that it is truly me. Touch me and see, for a spirit doesn't have flesh and bones as you see that I have. On the road to Emmaus, Jesus became known to the disciples in the breaking of the bread. Now to help those gathered believe that it was really him, Jesus asks them for something to eat. They gave him a piece of broiled fish. Jesus presents two forms of evidence that he is not a ghost. Jesus first demonstrated the physical reality of his resurrected body by inviting the disciples to look at him and to touch him, and secondly, by eating food in their presence. Neither would be possible if Jesus were a spirit. We have the sense that they watched in stunned silence. Now Jesus takes them the next step in the process, first reminding the disciples of what he said to them earlier and then helping them to understand the scriptures, scriptures that speak of the Messiah's suffering and rising from the dead on the third day, reminding them of the scriptures that speak of repentance and remission of sins that should be preached in, the name, in his name to all the nations beginning at Jerusalem. He stated, This is what I told you while I was still with you, that all things which are written in the law of Moses which was the first five books of the Bible, the prophets and the Psalms concerning me must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds that they might understand the scripture. The disciples are commissioned to be Jesus' witnesses. In Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth, prior to Jesus, the Jews had assumed a model with the world being drawn toward the central point of Jerusalem. After Jesus, the model reverses, spinning outward from Jerusalem. In Mark and Matthew, Jesus issues explicit commissioning statements. Luke, however, emphasizes repentance and forgiveness of sins. Mark emphasized preaching the gospel Matthew emphasized making disciples and teaching. Jesus says to his disciples, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. The scriptures are God's word, written to bear witness to Christ. The Old Testament bears witness to, to the Christ to come the New Testament to the Christ who is Jesus of Nazareth and to the Christ who will come again in glory to judge and to save. The word of God has the power to build faith. It is the means by which God's grace works in us. As the small catechism teaches, I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him, but the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel. God's word calls us. 
It gathers us, enlightens us, and sanctifies us. The power of God comes through the word of God. As Luther noted, it is God's word preached and proclaimed and believed that builds faith, and our faith is based on what the Bible proclaims. The way we approach the Bible is to see Jesus Christ at the center of the scriptures. He is the tool for evaluating and interpreting the whole. The risen Lord appeared to his 11 disciples and showed himself to them. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. The scriptures could only be understood by these men who had been with Jesus, witnessed the miracles, and heard his teaching after Jesus' death and resurrection. Then the Bible became clear. We come to understand the scriptures only when we see at the center a crucified and risen Lord. With our reading and studying of the Bible, we must bring our faith. Many people can study the ancient writings as a historical document, as literary text, as religious writings among other religious documents, but the point of the Bible is not to prove science or history, nor it is, is it to disprove the findings of historians or scientists. The Bible is a book of faith, written for the faithful. It is only when the disciples believed that Christ was truly risen that they began to see how the Bible made sense. Then their minds were open to a right understanding of the scriptures. The open Bible is a book of faith for God's people. The spirit of the Bible testifies to a loving, sacrificing, and forgiving God. The sacrifice of his son, the cross and the empty tomb bring light to the scriptures that God's love is free and unconditional. God's grace is given. God's people have always been faithless and fickle, but God is always forgiving and sure. What happened at the cross and the resurrection is what happened in part in God's saving of Noah and his family of Moses and the children of Israel in the return from exile. And it is faith which tells us of God's faithfulness and our eyes of faith that can look to the words of the Bible and see God's personal and saving word to us. The Bible is an open book. It both judges and forgives. We as Lutherans look at the scriptures as law and gospel. God's word calls us to repentance and tells us that we fall short of God's intention for us. The word convicts us of sin. The Bible also tells us in an even stronger term that we do not save ourselves. But we have a loving Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for all of our sins and offers us life and salvation. God's word tells us that we are loved and accepted and saved through Jesus Christ, through the cross and through the empty tomb. Yes, the disciples were in fact startled and frightened when Jesus appeared in their midst. But in the midst of their brokenness and confusion, he inspired them and enhanced their faith. They were struggling with hope and assurance in a cruel and hostile world. Jesus' acceptance and forgiveness of his disciples, who a few days before had rejected and denied him, moved them to remember their calling and the opportunity to live in God's abiding grace. Christ's appearance gave them the hope they needed to continue and to build the church. Besides the fact that Jesus reminded them of the need to be forgiven, he also reminded them of the need for repentance. Repentance comes from a Greek word which means conversion or turning. We are called away from the world's standards and therefore called to live by a different one, one in which we will continue to break bread together, continue a forgiving, tolerant, and inclusive spirit, and be willing to accept new challenges and to turn in directions that serve people of God. This we can be sure of. Just as Jesus was in the midst of his disciples, he is here with us in our midst, accepting us, loving us, and challenging us to continue to build his church. 
may our minds be open to understand the scriptures and the greatness of his faithfulness. Amen. Our hymn of the day today is another of our Easter anthems. Christ has arisen. Alleluia. I would invite you to stand as you are able as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join together in our pre-prayer verse. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Our response this morning is, God of grace, hear our prayer. O God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers. Lead us to share all that we have and find in generosity abundant life. God of grace, hear our prayer. O God, our creator, you bring forth all life on earth, calm storms, bring water to parched places, and protect the climate that this planet would sustain life in all its variety. God of grace, hear our prayer. O God, our savior, you offer wisdom and guidance beyond all human knowledge. Instruct lawmakers, judges, and elected officials to make decisions grounded in your justice and care for all people. God of grace, hear our prayer. O God, our elder, you care for all your children. Encourage those who are in times of transition, facing the loss of old ways and routines and anticipating change. Guide those who journey in grief, in hope, and in uncertainty. God of grace, hear our prayer. O God, our center, you bring all people together in you. Help us to remember our identity and purpose in our church and in its ministry. Move us to love our neighbors as ourselves and to share in the beloved community. God of grace, hear our prayer. O God, our resting place, your son Jesus promised that we are held in your love forever. We remember our beloved who have died. As we remember and share their love, comfort those who mourn. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please take a few moments to share the peace with one another as the kids come back in and we have our morning offering and their noisy offering.
I would invite you to stand as we sing our offertory hymn this morning, which is, Lord, I lift your name on high. And let us join together in our offertory prayer. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give our thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in, in, who in rising has brought us eternal life. And so we join all the angels as we praise your name and join their unending hymn. It was in the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. Please be seated and come at the direction of the ushers.
Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. And the Lord look upon you with favor and give you and many through you his peace. Amen. Our sending him this morning is sent forth by God's blessing. you have a wonderful week. Um, one thing I have forgotten to share throughout on the back, we are placing one of our quilts that we've been working on each week. So you'll see a variety of different ones. Um, this one happened to have all pieces that someone, and we don't know who, donated all of those painted flowers on it, and then we assembled it into the quilt. And so we're thankful for those donations. And again, these are just some of the projects we've been working on. Also, if there are suggestions as far as if you know of a need of someone for a keyboard, the keyboard does have some issues that cannot be repaired, but for the most part, it could be utilized. You can't record on it like we need and, and some of those things. And there are a couple keys that stick, but if someone needs a keyboard, talk to Tom because um, it, is, it is there and available and can continue to be of service in some capacity, I'm sure. And now let us sing our doxology. serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 